This video tutorial will cover how to add a new box and specimens into your virtual freezer in WebLDMS. On the stored samples page, expand the freezer until you find your destination rack. So we're going to use this rack and we'll add a new container. You add a new container using the menu option over to the right add new container. Click and you're presented with the create storage container menu. The first question is how many boxes do you wish to add? For this example I will add a single container. Below that it asks you to select a template. You may or may not have these available at your laboratory. A template will pre-fill in the remaining menu and build the box for you. It is not necessary to use, but it can save you some time if you are always utilizing the same type of storage container. For example, I'm going to fill out this menu manually, and then we'll see how a template works. You start by setting your box's dimensions, and I'm going to build a 9 by 9 box. Next, how is the box labeled? We see once I have set my dimensions, I have a 2D representation of that box. The box is labeled as positions only, meaning that position 1 is here in the top left hand corner, followed by position 81 all the way at the bottom. If you wish to label the individual rows and columns, you do that by deactivating positions only and then changing the labeling methods in the menu. In this example, I wish to use numeric columns but alphabetic rows. My fill order is set in this drop down menu. It defaults left to right, top to bottom. All of the iterations of that are available. With that fill order in place, we see that my first space is A1 in the top left hand corner, and the last space is I9 in the bottom. Now below that, I have an option of creating this as a template. By clicking the Save as New Template and giving this a name. We see at the bottom I have the option of saving this as a new template by simply checking the Save as New Template box and giving the template a name. If you click Continue, you now will place the box onto the rack. Give the box its name, this is the display name for the box, and the position in the rack. The first available position is highlighted for you based upon the fill order of that rack, but you may choose any position by either clicking or using the drop down menu. Click continue to assign the box that position. And here we see our empty box. If you wish to utilize a template, simply use the drop down menu, add new container, choose the number of containers to add, and then simply choose the template from the menu. Everything will be pre-filled for you. Click continue and assign the box a position on the rack. give it a name, and click continue to give it that position. Now we are ready to add specimens to our box. Once I've highlighted a box name, my barcode badge at the top has changed to a barcode with a plus sign. This means that I can utilize the barcode at this point to scan the specimen and then assign the position. 
There's also a menu option at the container level to store specimens. Select. At the top of the select specimens menu, we see the freezer, shelf, rack, and then the container name that we are adding specimens to. Below our filters, we see a list of specimens available to be added to the box. Now we can filter this list by applying the filters above As you type, all of these filters are self-filtering uh, through the menu, and you can choose. So we have applied one filter. Our list is now limited to only those specimens that apply to that filter. And you can choose to add them to the box by checking the box to the left. As you select specimens to add, there is a running tally at the bottom of how many empty spaces are left for that container. These will remain selected until you either clear them or deselect the checkbox, allowing you to apply different filters and select further specimens. Also note, you can simply upload a file of global specimen IDs to fill this list. Once you've selected all of your specimens you wish to add at this time, click Continue, and then you will assign them a position within the container. A 2D representation of the containers in the center of the menu. At the top, we see our global specimen ID and the number of that specimen in the queue. We have nine total specimens selected. The first available position is selected for us in blue. You can always override that by choosing a new position. If you check the set frozen info for the specimens, they will be assigned a frozen date and time as you assign the position. You can also choose to autofill. This will assign all of the specimens positions one through nine according to the fill order. In this case, it's left to right, top to bottom. So we'll start at A1 and end at A9. But let's choose continue, and it will assign the position one specimen at a time through the queue of nine specimens. Always the next available position will be highlighted and presented to you. You can accept it by clicking continue or override it by choosing a different position. Let us choose autofill and it will continue to assign the positions for the remainder of the queue. So here in our box, if I expand, we now see the specimens contained inside. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any further questions, please contact our 24-7 User Support Department. The contact us information is on our webpage at ldms.org.